collectible card games tend to phase in and out of popularity with mainstream groups of people, but they remain effervescent with the dedicated niche. Magic the Gathering is a testament to that with 23 years of existence, and is still considered one of the most popular, if not the most popular, CCG. Other card games like the Pokemon trading card games remain, but not entirely for the way it plays. It's not every day you see new card games, but we've seen the rise of Hearthstone, and it has swept millions. And while it's a generally fresh card game to play, digital card games haven't taken advantage of their unique aspects of being digital. It's just the physical game translated to a computer. Free Range Games wants to take advantage of being digital with Labyrinth. They call it a collectible card RPG. In the demonstration they showed me and what I played, calling it an RPG is loose, but they also don't know what to call it. It's a combination of a few genres, but what they showed me so far is promising. In Labyrinth, you choose three characters to play on a field. Each have their own disciplines and decks with specific cards that fit them. It's a turn-based strategy game, but the attacks and defense is chosen based on the cards you have in the hand of the character. The twist to this card game is you can move around on the field. It's not just translating the card action into 3D space. Cards are designed with movement and placement in mind. Here's how a turn can play out. You'll draw a card. Then you'll have the option to move or play a card. Your turn won't end until you draw a card or play one. So you can move, or if you're fine where you're at, you can play the variety of cards you have or just draw one. Cards in Labyrinth follow suit with traditional card games. There are basic attack cards, attack cards with extra abilities, defense cards, healing cards, buffing cards, etc but it's the ability to move around the field that provides the challenge. For example, you can't just play the attack card you have, you have to be in range. Free range adds more depth with ticks. The number on the cards determine how many ticks you have to wait until that character can move. A card can be extremely powerful, but playing it might mean the character can't do anything for seven turns. Each character also accumulates points specific to their discipline. Those points allow you to play other cards, buff cards, or maybe spend those points to reduce the amount of ticks you have to wait. All of this combines to create a very deep and thoughtful game. Thankfully, every character has one basic attack card they can always play and cost two ticks. So you never have to worry about not drawing that one attack card or creating a deck based on making sure you always have basic attacks on hand. The way I feel about Labyrinth is the way I felt about Rocket League. You wonder why someone didn't come up with something like this sooner. It's such an obvious gameplay premise, and it has a lot of promise. Top players from Magic the Gathering and support from Skybound are in Free Range's inner circle to make sure the game is as good as it could be when it officially launches. Labyrinth will be a free-to-play game, but one with the intention not to be played to win. But the full business model has yet to be established. From the limited amount I've been able to play, Labyrinth looks like something you'll want to keep your eye on. I appreciate how difficult it is and the variety of elements you have to think about each turn. It's daunting at first, but like any card game, the more you play, the more you understand what you need and what you would like to add to your character's deck. Free Range has lofty but practical plans for Labyrinth. It's already coming together nicely, and I genuinely believe if they do this right, this could be a game that lasts for years.